Hello and welcome to the Rational Webcast. I am Rational Marty. I'm here today with Rational Nick. Hello. You totally ruined that. That could have been a decent start, and you you didn't bother. Well, I said was hello. You don't put any effort into these things. I always do. I always do the intro. You can do the intro. No I'm away this failing. week. What? I'm dealing with a. I'm I'm coping with a setup kept together with duct tape and spit. That sounds. Bad. I'm on a laptop this week. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, did you ever hear about those laptops that were like covered in cat pee, and a load of laptops had to be taken back because they were covered in cat pee? Did you ever hear about that? I'm not making. Today that up, on the though. webcast, we're talking about. Shut up. We're talking about PlayStation 4.5. Uh, eight PlayStation VR secrets you need to know. Uh, Sony closing Evolution Studios. Ubisoft threatens a talent exodus if uh, Vivendi attempts a hostile takeover. Well, of course, if somebody's trying to hostily take over your country, then you run away. Uh, Nintendo denies reports of Wii U ceasing production. Uh, we <laughs> Nintendo denies that these in. Nintendo NX was actually a le legitimate leak. Uh, Nintendo, no, no, Nvidia, <laughs> Nvidia wants to look at a Netflix of gaming idea, as they put it. Uh, we talk about what the developers of that Dragon Council have been saying about Let's Plays, and then we, uh, then we talk about Microsoft's Teen Girl AI and how it turned into a freak. How are you this week, Marty, as if I need to ask? I am fine, thank you very much. I have been playing you're, a little bit of Hearthstone and tried for the first time Sleeping Dogs, which I was very happy with. Um, how about yourself? I am trying to cope with this poor setup. I'm away this week for Easter. Fair enough. I hope you appreciate my being here. <laughs> oh, I hope you are a bit more professional than you were before the webcast. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm always a professional. Well, you were, you and were that drinking comes beer across in... and talking about shit. Did you see that game? The, there's poop in my soup. Um, it was what? on Steam Early Access. There's poop in my soup. There's it's poop on my soup. I've heard about it. I thought it was just a number one of these random games like um, Muddy Heights. It was a bit, but it, it was it was actually a game, and it was you know semi well made, far better than the majority of these crap things that you get on green lights. But still, are you trying anyway. to say it's the next big thing? It's the next game of the year. No, no, I'm not saying that, Nick. Why would I say that about <laughs> poop and soup? There's poop in my soup. So there's a snake in my shoe. Talk about so, the PlayStation. So, uh, yeah, talking about the PlayStation. I actually want to talk about, first of all, uh, PlayStation 4.5. Now I understand, Nick, that that was yeah. the wrong way around. But. No, no, I told you. I, I, I said we're talking about 4.5 and then VR. Nick. Nick. Just Nick. talk about it. Just just go. You, you, you stop this power struggle, okay? You need to stop this power struggle. We both know that I'm the king of the crop here. I'm the poop in the soup. <laughs> so, um, well, I am at the peak of the muddiest of heights, so get stuffed. That was such a poor comeback. I don't even want to go into it. PS so, 4.5 may actually yeah, be a the, thing. So there are rumours about this 4.5 thing. Um, first of all, it's not going to be called the PlayStation 4.5 because that's a shit name. It's going to be called well, the PlayStation no, 4K. Yeah. The reason why it's going to be called the PlayStation 4K is because it's going to be capable of outputting 4K. Now, some people are saying, oh, wow, well, it's going to be a games console. It's going to be 4K. It's not going to be a games console that's 4K. Whoever says that should be shot in the mouth. The fact is that no no console is going to be capable of playing 4K for another few years because 4K costs shitloads. You cannot just put in any average graphics card and be able to get 4K out of it. You need to have a absolute monster. So, but however, my, this my is... My graphics card is capable of 4K. And it's an absolute monster that costs you over a thousand pounds. No, it wasn't though. I it haven't got a Titan X. It wasn't. And I'm not saying it just the graphics card. Quid. The whole setup cost you over a thousand pounds. Well, yeah, the whole setup. The whole exactly. setup. Exactly. Shut up. 
So any any commercially available console is not going to be. Yeah, it's not going to go on sale for a thousand pounds. Never mind anything else. So the yeah, talk but the point is, is you is need a 4K be... monitor as well or TV. That's not quite the issue then. Yeah, but they don't come cheap neither. They're, they're reasonably well priced at the moment, and the fact is, is that this is Sony that's going to be selling this, and they want to push their TVs. So this makes sense for them commercially to try and sell a console that's capable of 4K and you know and, and try and push the whole 4K thing so that they can make money out of 4K televisions. I think I just think it's interesting that there seems to be a generation 8.5 coming unto us with the PlayStation 4K and the Nintendo NX. Mhm. And obviously, my, is... Microsoft talking about this as well. No, Microsoft is just talking about being capable of upgrading the P, uh, so my, the Xbox One. Well, no, they, they've also talked about the idea of having stop gaps in the technology, so having additional okay. iterations okay. of... Get off your snooty horse. <laughs> so they, they, they're talking about the exact same thing as what PlayStation are doing here. Um, Fine. And they're also talking about this releasing... Um, uh, holiday this year so we could potentially see this in times for Christmas now the other mm. interesting thing is is this going to have any impact on PlayStation VR in any way shape or form I'd have kind of thought uh, not but it would make sense if they bundle into it <clears throat> the um, processor that's yeah. needed for PlayStation VR in some way I imagine that um, I, I imagine it would be geared more towards VR I mean whereas the like using the PlayStation portable and the PS Vita as examples the PS3 had some functionality with the um, PS3 sorry the PS4 even um, but there is much more functionality like you can use it as a separate like screen between the Vita and the PS4 uh, I think this might be a, the case of um, PS4 and the VR uh, it's kind of like, yeah, there's some functionality, you can use it, but with the 4K and the VR, there's going to be much, it's going to be properly geared towards it because they know what to do with it. Um, I'd be surprised if that's the case. They've got How millions so? of PlayStation 4s out there. They, they don't want to alienate their users. They, they, well, they no, want but to they can add their more. Users. They can they, they can add more stuff in to the 4K specifically for VR though. Yeah, but that's kind of then alienating if those that have already to. bought a PlayStation 4. That doesn't well, seem they like care a about alienating. Move. They've already alienated people by making the new consoles not backwards compatible in the first place. But they they specifically they care about really. the alienation. But, they, but it, every generation they, they want you to upgrade to the next gen. But this isn't a next gen. Well, this, that, is, put... this is almost. Yeah, but I they, see this as being more like akin to the to the PlayStation Three and the PlayStation Three Slim. I don't see it like that because the PlayStation Three Slim didn't have any extra tech in it. It was just a slimmer console. But I mean, this isn't. They managed to make really it more gonna have much else. All this is going to have is is what? an upgraded HDMI slot, as far as I can see. If if the rumors are true. Yeah, but I, I still think they're going to add more stuff to it. If they... I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, there's no doubt that they could. They could up, upgrade the processor, upgrade the graphics card in there, and I don't enable it to, to kind of still play the same games, but have an upgraded version of them. Um, so the kind of the difference between medium and high settings, if you like. Um, and a PC Yeah, game. I just don't think they're going to do just the 4K thing. I think they're going to take the opportunity to put some extra stuff in there as all. I... Seems sensible to me. I, I can't see why they do it, though. I, I can't see what they'd... I mean, I completely understand that they want, they'd want people to upgrade to it, but I just, I just feel like they're they're kicking those people that have already purchased the thing in, the, in their arse. 
well no not really it's like if you want to try out the extra kind of almost experimental stuff then get the 4k and if you don't then we have no problem with you staying on the playstation 4 maybe they want to maybe they might want to use it as a a test bed for some ideas they might have for the ps5 in however many years like future tech the early stages of it they might you want just want to use it as a, an experiment piece I've never heard of a console manufacturer doing that. But it's not out of the realms of possibility, though. I'd say so, with somebody like Sony. I mean, they're not going to put something in there that they're not going to use. Well, the point is, they they, they would use it. I, I don't know, I'm just saying. It seems kind of pointless to me to just have a new console just for 4K. Well, no, but what I'm saying is that that does make sense if you take into account that the people selling the 4K TVs are the same people making the console. It seems an awfully expensive uh, marketing push to sell your TVs. Why? They were already going to. They were already going to come up with the PlayStation 4 Slim. That that's their route yeah. that they go down. They always make the the first console, and then a couple of years later, they come out with the slim version of it anyway. So all you're really saying is they're just gonna have it's basically it's not even a PlayStation 4.5, is what I hear you saying. It's basically just the PlayStation 4 um, new version, the new fancier version, just like the slimline PS2, PS3, but it's just got an extra slot in the back that is capable of outputting 4K. Basically, that, that's what I believe it will be. Yes. Okay, in that case, it's not. Yeah, people should. In that case, people should just stop calling it PlayStation 4.5. That's what I'm saying. It should be called it's PlayStation not... 4K, and that's what it'll be called. <sighs> okay, yeah. Because that makes so much more sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's not the PlayStation 4.5 because it's not got. All I'm saying is that the <laughs> the name PlayStation 4.5 invoked the idea that it'd have extra technology that actually placed it between. The PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. I mean, there's no doubt that it could. But I'd be surprised if they went down that route. The only other thing, as I say, I can see them doing is bundling in the additional processing unit that you have with the PlayStation VR into the unit yeah. itself in the same way that Microsoft did with the um, Kinect. Um, they had the well, there um, you go, then. kind of power cable and then they instead bundled it so that in the um, updated... Um, Xbox 360, you were able to put plug it straight into the the connect straight into it. Well, there you go. That's that's in some way giving it towards the VR in the way I suggested. What? No, it isn't. Well, yeah. The, basically, there are things they couldn't do with the PS4 when VR came out because the PS4 inherently came out before VR. Now they're having a new version, so. Yeah, the extraneous stuff that's come out with the VR, like the extra processing unit, we might as well just bundle in and have it all come as one package. Yes, I believe they might do that. There you go, man. doing the stuff that you were talking about. <sighs> I think we got our wires crossed. No, I think that you were talking about adding extras in there to make it all experimental and shit. And the fact is they won't do that. You're making stuff up. You're getting people's hopes up for things that'll never happen. If you want the really good stuff, just go and buy a PC. <laughs> for a thousand pounds. There we go. <laughs> then buy the VR. Anyway, we should... <laughs> <laughs> then buy the VR, yeah. Get the entire kit for only two thousand pounds. Because that's what is amazing is that some people are saying... Well, the PlayStation VR isn't that cheap because you still have to buy the camera. And if you want to get any of the tracking stuff, you've kind of got to get the um, uh, remotes as well, the, the PlayStation Moves. But they never seem to talk about the fact that, yes, that's fine and that is kind of an extra which gets the price closer to the Oculus Rift. Um, but the fact is that it's still £100 cheaper than the Oculus Rift and you don't have to spend £1,000 on a TV. Uh, sorry, on a P uh, PC. So it, it, it's it's still a, a massive difference in price. If you want a really cheap VR experience, just go and buy one of these uh, VR mounts that you can just get easily off of Amazon. 
I had a chance to play with the one I bought for my mum, and it's actually pretty good. <laughs> Surprisingly so. Yeah, what did you play? Uh, well, I just uh, got the Google Cardboard, and um, I just tried some of the demos, and I, I, I then got this uh, kind of like Space Fighter game, and it wasn't actually too bad. It was quite responsive, surprisingly enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't nearly as good as uh, like the Vive is or anything, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's but for what it is, it's actually not. It's not awful. Mm. Yeah, I mean, about, about a year ago, I had um, we got a, a cardboard for for at work just to kind of test it and muck about with it, um, and I, I found it surprisingly effective for what it was. Um, mm. it's, but as you say, it, it, for me, it was it was a proving ground. It was it was just showing that yes, this basic yeah, concept yeah. worked, and there's no reason why you should be kind of afraid of it falling flat on its face mm. um, anyway so uh, th another few things just about PlayStation VR more than anything um, it's quite interesting that they said originally that there were going to be 50 PlayStation VR games by the end of the year um, obviously a lot of people That's are going to want to launch <laughs> in that first um, window and they'll make a lot of money if they do uh, but the fact is that I mean, Yoshida... yeah, I don't even oh, I don't even that many PS4 games at present <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the fact is that even though there are all those games that are currently kind of being planned for release, Yoshida is specifically stating that he doesn't want that to, there to be that many. He's saying it's a bit too many, possibly, but some of these games will be pushed out of that window. Um, mm. And he kind of hopes that there'll be more kind of later on, um, just outside of the window. Because the, the problem is that it, it could be a bit like the um, Connect in that there were a lot of games coming out for it straight away. But then, after six months or so, that really dried up. And you probably didn't see anything for another six months after that. Um, and I guess it, it's and then good by that point, that, uh, it's, it's really slow. are excited and, you know, have a lot... Have the, have the drive to make games for it. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, the Wii U, where nobody wants to make games for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But again, it's it's you know, a lot of games came out for it straight away. Um, the problem is that they need to keep that uh, pace up, uh, and really, that's only going to be done by people buying the buying the thing in the first place. Um, I was talking to my brother-in-law; mm. he's he's already put his deposit down for his PlayStation VR now, um, so yeah. he'll be getting it when it comes out, which is October, isn't it? So, it's uh, yeah, it's exciting times. Um, and also, Yoshida has specifically come out and said that um, kind of more apps are going to be coming out for it as well, so not just full-on games uh, so for example netflix is specifically coming out for it um as are a few other applications they just don't want to talk about it at the moment it's good isn't it playstation won't be adding its own ocular star ratings to one of vr intensity yeah that's some its people have seemed to gloss over the fact that it could cause motion sickness in a lot of people I know my mum mm. suffered with the vertigo uh, when she uh, used the um, cardboard style thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit worrying. Um, well, it's I, the same I mean... idea as uh, kind of the warning that was at the start of Cloverfield. Mm -hmm. I never saw Cloverfield. Yeah, it didn't bother me. It didn't make me motion sick, but it did for other people. So. Yeah. I, know, I, I went to the cinema to go and watch Cloverfield, and... Um, I watched the first maybe five, ten minutes of it, and then the camera, the projector, sorry, at the back, um, exploded. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of left, and they gave me my money back, saying, "Please come back and watch it some other time." But at the moment, this is exploded, never did. and I never went back because it was terrible. <laughs> uh, at least the first ten minutes was. So yeah, though I, I do like, quite the, like the, the look of the new Cloverfield Lane thing. That looks awesome. Yeah, I was interested. I mean, at first I thought it was just a kind of uh, thriller type thing where somebody gets kidnapped and is stuck in a basement. I was like, yeah, no, not my thing. But then it had some extra stuff. It was like, no, this actually looks interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, I, but the point I just is, really I... like the um, the main actress in it and the um, the older dude, the main actor as well. Um, I, I think well, they're both got, really, got really John good. John Goodman in it, so it can't be bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. But yeah, Cloverfield, uh, the original one, is actually not too bad. Once you get past the first like, half an hour or so. 
first half an hour is god awful. <laughs> it's just that party and it just goes on forever. And then something randomly explodes in the city and everything kicks off and it's all monster explosions, people getting fucked up and it's just, it's just kind of fun. <laughs> Fair enough. You can mm. make your ship sound like William Shatner in Elite Dangerous. Yeah, I did hear about That's that. That's awesome. Meh. Meh. Nice. Anyway, so. How last meh are week, you? Last week, we talked about Lionhead Studios. Yeah. And uh, the sad passing. We certainly uh, did. Formerly a great studio. Uh, and this week, unfortunately, Sony have kind of done the exact same thing. Um, so they have Demarches. unfortunately closed down <laughs> Evolution Studios. Um, now, you guys out there may, may know uh, Evolution Studios worked on Motorstorm, uh, which was a fantastic uh, series, uh, one that I really enjoyed. Certainly, um, on, on some of the games on PlayStation 3 were fun, absolutely brilliant. Um, so it's, it's a massive shame to see them close down. At the same time, why did they fuck up with Drive Club? I mean, I've not <laughs> seen a, such a high-profile game like Drive Club um, kind of really fall in the same way that that did. Um, the, the fact that they announced that it was going to be uh, on PlayStation Plus and that everybody would be able to play it pretty quickly, and it turned out that it took almost two years for that to, to materialise. Um, and for me, that was something that I was really looking forward to, the fact that it's only worth may sound ridiculous but effectively giving me something that I was able to play and, and almost test elements of the PlayStation 4 with it because it was really graphically intensive and, and still one of the prettiest driving games out there um, and, and they just absolutely fucked it up I mean the online elements of it which were meant to be half of the reason for its existence were just I don't know I don't, I don't quite know how they messed that up as, as, as badly as they did um, yeah. yeah, so they're, they're closing down the studio. I can't say I ever played any of Evolution's games, to be perfectly honest. You never played Motorstorm? Driving games are not... Nah, driving games are not my kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's kind of weird how they keep people keep closing studios. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah like, it's, it's certainly time. not great. Um, and with this as well, it's quite weird because... Um, though they might not be doing anything more with Drive Club, they they were making a new Drive Club for the PlayStation VR, um, <sighs> but that was being handled by a, a separate studio, and a lot of people kind of wondered why that was. Looks like this is the reason why. Because Evolution's being closed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Obsessively. Um, and they have said that they're going to try and kind of shuffle people around rather than. Um, closing everything. But, Five of them. Yeah, but still. Get out! Get out on your ass. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Maybe they could go and wait for uh, work for Ubisoft. Oh wait! <laughs> Seamless segue. Yeah, go for it, Nick. Seg seg away. <laughs> seg away. Seg away. Well, uh, Vivendi is thinking about a hostile takeover of Ubisoft and Ubisoft threatens a talent uh, outage, people basically leaving in their f hordes uh, to try and stop it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, is, they have yeah, been actively trying awful. to take over um, Ubisoft for a while now, haven't they? Um, mm. I think, yeah, currently they own just over 15% of the company. Uh, but they're, they're They've been actively buying up stock wherever they can and trying their best to take it's over the whole thing. That, it's interesting that Ubisoft are actively trying to do something to prevent that. Seeing a company come together in that way is actually quite refreshing. Mm -hmm. Because so many studios and companies get thrown from one to another and you know the, the, nobody really seems to care. But it seems like they really do not want to have this takeover and they're actively willing to do something over it mm -hmm. they're not just going to take it sitting down yeah yeah definitely it's uh it's the issue is vivendi have 
a long history of seriously screwing over any um, any company that they take take over at the moment, uh, and you really can't blame them for trying to uh, trying to keep away from this as, as best they can. Um, Vivendi. Well, um, Ubisoft have got enough shit lately as it is, uh, so they're only going to get more for Vendy to take them over. Yeah. <laughs> yep, definitely. Definitely. It's, it's certainly not something that anybody wants to see Vivendi taking over um, Ubisoft. Ubisoft may not be great, but Vivendi are worse. That's why nobody knows any games that they've made. Because they don't make games. They just screw people over and then shit out whatever they can. If... If there's a hostile takeover by Vivendi and Guillemot leaves, every person who is good at Ubisoft would be recruited by EA, Activision, and Take Two, explained analyst Michael Pacher. Pacter. Pacter. I can't say that properly. <laughs> yep, it's uh, it's not great. Not great. I. I wish them best of luck because I just really hope that this doesn't doesn't happen. Although I'd, I'd hate to see good talent going to EA. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Where they just get to work on mobile games and uh, expensive DLC mm -hmm. for the rest of their lives. Meh. 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 I give you meh. 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 Season 3 of The Walking Dead is coming out at some point, and I'm excited. I just saw that um, advertised, and I remembered, and I thought I'd mention that. <laughs> yeah, they're talking about a um, significant upgrade to the system this time around, um, and mm. it will demonstrate new gameplay styles for the first time. Uh, sounds like they're really wanting this to be their uh, their flagship. This time I don't around. really particularly... I don't care about the gameplay of Walking Dead so much as the story in it. I mean, I imagine they could just have it as a like four-hour-long cutscene, and I'd still, you know, love it. <laughs> I still haven't played um, season two. I've owned it, really? I've owned it for Play a while. It. I've just good. not played it. It's not as good as yeah. season one, but it's still really, really good. Meh. I don't know. I, I, if you want to play I, anything I'll, I'll that's really good by Telltale, play The Wolf Among Us. Yeah, I, I could if if I, if I owned that, I definitely would play it. I don't own it. Oh, buy it. It's fantastic. Nah. Nah. I'm okay. I'm okay. I don't. <sighs> I'm okay. Lame. <sighs> You're lame. You're lame. You're lame. Shut up. You're lame. Is this degrading um, into just us calling each other lame and names and stuff? Sure. Like it always does. Douche. So, Nintendo. <laughs> Let's talk about Ninty for a while. As um, always. So, um, earlier this <laughs> week, um, Nikkei, I think it's pronounced, I have no idea. They came out and stated that um, the Wii U will be ceasing production this year. Um, now it wasn't a massive shock, and you know it, it's relatively believable because um, nobody cares about if, it. If it's um, if it, if it turned out to be true, however, nin this obviously shocked Nintendo and really upset them because they bothered to come out and um, uh, and refute the claims, stating that uh, that they are not um, they are not ce ceasing production this year, um, which. I don't know. I'd be surprised if that were if, if that were actually the case, because they've got the next gen um, NX coming out soonish. Um, I fully appreciate that Splatoon and Super Mario Maker have really kind of increased sales, but I'd be surprised if they were to uh, to really carry on with the Wii U at this point. Um, there's no doubt that there's still room for them to do so if they wanted to, but they just don't appear to be putting much effort into it. I think everybody is just currently waiting for Zelda to come out and then everybody will forget that the Wii U really existed. Well, the reason they have in the NX in the first place is because the Wii U didn't do as fantastically as they were hoping. So they were basically going, okay, well, let's try again. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're coming up to the point now where you know a new console is, is about right. 
you know, in terms of the the life cycle, if you like, of a console. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the Wii U did come out like way before the other consoles, mm. didn't they? Like in the eighth gen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not unlikely that a, a new console should be coming out soonish, but yeah. We'll see. Any I thoughts know, on it? It just doesn't feel like the no it. Nobody cares about the Wii U anymore. <laughs> but I feel that that even when the NX does come out, they'll still be producing the Wii U for at least a limited time. Because well, when the PS3 came out, they were still developing like, like, like just well, yeah, they were still making and even developing games for uh, the PS2. And the same with the, when the PS4 came out, they were still uh, producing PS3s for a while. That's just how it goes. There is a crossover period, and it seems kind of silly that they would just like outright stop producing the Wii U as soon as the NX is on the horizon. You know, there needs to be some crossover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, because it might just people... be more a case of them slowing it down as much as anything else. Yeah, yeah, I'd I'd see it more as a slowdown rather than a complete halt. Mm-hmm. Speaking yeah. of the NX, though. We thought, everybody thought we got the first glimpse at a leaks uh, view of the NX. Uh, <laughs> it turned out to be fake, but the, that's not the point. The point is, everybody lost their shit over it. They hated it. They were not pleased. Yeah, now it should be noted that there were two, um, for, uh, there were two leaks, supposedly. Um, one which showed um, kind of a handheld console with a full screen throughout the whole thing. Um, and it was displaying an image on it um, of a game. Uh, now that came out as, as um, that was came out as being fake, and the um, creator of the fake actually made a video demonstrating how he created it. Um, but most people by that point had already decided that it was a fake. Yeah. Um, and now there's a second one that's come out, um, which. Again, people are saying it's, it's almost certainly fake. Oh no, they're saying it's definitely a fake. Um, but it, again, it's this one is quite interesting because a lot of people were saying that it was definitely real <laughs> um, because of kind of certain reflections and the, the the image of a, a tree reflected in something in the background. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I am a bit fed up with these le- you know, supposed leaks. I mean, it's, it's all just bullshit, isn't it, really? Well, what I found interesting was the reaction people had to it. I mean, just the level of outrage kind of shows us something about how Nintendo kind of have to get it spot on uh, in the first instance to not have a massive backlash. So I think they could definitely take some uh, take some feedback from <laughs> this uh, whole debacle. Yeah, I mean, these these leaks are based upon um, uh, what's it um, Patents that Nintendo sent out. Um, and these patents display something very, very similar to what these guys have, have created as fakes, um, which is that the whole thing is a screen, um, but that it has control sticks, and that it then has touchscreen buttons. Now, anybody who has ever tried to use a game with touchscreen buttons can tell you that you should never, ever try to make a game using touchscreen buttons. They don't work. Anybody who um, tried to play a game on their phone. <laughs> so, for Nintendo to uh, to consider making that really is amazing. Um, never mind the fact that they actually could do it. Um, and, I mean, these leaks just go to demonstrate that they definitely shouldn't. It's, it's a ridiculous concept. Um, well, and if the they fact do, they'll the, just... The uh... idea of having the, the whole controller as a, as a screen. Um, you, you, you've got two holes in it for a start, where, you, where your control sticks are going to be. And then your hands are going to be covering a good portion of it as well. It's, it's such a stupid idea. Whoever came up with that idea at Nintendo should just be shot in the face. <laughs> I mean... I don't know. I um, I might cause controversy now, but I like the uh, the sleekness of it. The, the uh, I, I like, like the, the like the shape of it, not the fact that the controllers are in the middle of the screen. That's stupid. But I do like the kind of um, 
the oval shaped sleekness of it. I think that's why it kind of reminds me of the PSP in that respect. It doesn't look like it'd be comfortable to hold for any length of time. No, no, no. It, 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 I, I'm not talking about holding, I'm talking about how it looks. <laughs> okay, I mean, it, it looks. Yeah, I mean, I can see what you mean about aesthetically, it looks reasonable, but it, it, it surely would not be pleasant to hold for any more than two minutes. Well, like I said, it is uh, as pleasant as the PSP. I don't know, the PSP didn't have rounded corners like that, that would just stick into your hand. Well, th those are supposed to rest on your hand, not actually, you know, jab into your hands. That would jab into your hand. You're supposed yeah, to hold it that so that jabbing. it goes between your thumb and your fingers. That would be jabbing. Not jabbing. jabbed into your hands. That would be jabbing into your hand. Jab, jab, <sighs> jab. Don't make a sex joke. It would just be terrible. And... I sincerely hope they don't go ahead with it. Anyway. I said don't uh, make a sex joke. <laughs> I didn't make a sex joke. So. Oh, it could be construed um, that way. NVIDIA. <sighs> NVIDIA is wanting to do shit. Stuff that has been done before. Kinda. NVIDIA want to pursue a kind of uh, gaming on demand type thing with GeForce Now. Uh, people are they calling it the Netflix streaming. of gaming. What? They just, they just want to do gaming in the cloud. They want to do on live. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's Yeah, on live. That's why I said it's been done before. And failed. Yeah, it's... I don't Well, understand. not exactly failed, just nobody really cared. <laughs> well, it failed. I mean, it's not around now. Hmm. That's, that's a fail. Um, the point the only is, other people that are currently not... doing it is PlayStation Now, and they are far too expensive to make it really relevant. So, it's not entirely a horrible idea, though. That's the thing about it. I don't think the whole on live idea was completely garbage, and I don't think the whole thing videos trying to do is an entirely bad idea. I mean, for people who don't, especially if it's processed in a remote location, you know, you don't need any kind of uh, specialist uh, equipment to be able to play it. Just play, uh, you just pay a subscription fee every month, and you can pay what, play whatever game you want without having to have the rig or anything. And if anybody can pull this off, it's probably Nvidia. Yeah, they have already demonstrated some pretty impressive uh, streaming technology. So. I mean, it's not like they're just jumping into this, like um, the whole on live thing. They've been playing with this kind of thing for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you can have your streaming um, t from your NVIDIA enabled PC to the NVIDIA Shield. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of like, it seemed like that was kind of a test bed for this. And now they're going ahead with it, so it's not like they're just diving in. They have done their research, they have laid it out, and I think, like I say, if anybody can do it, then NVIDIA have a damn good chance. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've just gone onto their website and I to think see it's... how much it would be in the UK. Um, it's £7.50 a month. Which is not awful. That, that's it's amazing. It's about in the same range as Netflix. Yeah, I mean, that that's to me, it's pretty amazing. Uh, with your first three months mm. free. Especially thinking about, like I said, you don't have to... Uh, you, you have access to a uh, selection of games, high-end games as well, that you don't need a decent rig for. And I'm assuming they're going to have, you know, full-end, high-end graphics on these games. Uh, like I can see that they've got Tomb Raider there, they'll probably have the high-end processing on that, so you can get the uh, complete hair graphics they, that got, that game has. They've got Witcher 3 on here, I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think it's worth it. I don't know whether yeah. at the moment you need PlayStation Shield. Uh, the PlayStation Shield. Um, Nvidia Shield. I assume you kind of do. Nvidia Shield. <sighs> I think when they, this thing goes live, they're going to release a proprietary box or something that receives it. Uh, similar well, to like the Shield. Roku or the uh, Amazon Fire Stick or something, but enabled for gaming. Nvidia Shield. Yeah, no, that's that. 
That's an entire tablet, though. Another that costs shield a lot of money. The NVIDIA Shield console. What? Yeah, no, I'm talking about just a box that's like the equivalent of a Steam Link. Or, you know, the Roku box. Where it is literally just there to receive this stuff. A, a cheap... A cheap thing that you can use for it. I'd be surprised if they ever did that. No, I would be surprised if they didn't do that. You know, people have... Uh, all these different companies have different uh, ends of this kind of thing. Like I say, Steam has a Steam Link and then the Steam Machines and different grades of a Steam Machine. So... I can see them doing that. Fair enough. I mean, they, they, <coughs> they, they want whatever they bring out to be high-end. So you're going to have to have a decent controller with it anyway. Um... Right. So you're kind of paying at least 50 quid for a decent controller there. I don't know. Compare that to a £1,000 for a decent computer. I'm not saying that it won't be... I mean, that that's why I'm saying that the NVIDIA Shield is is already pretty cheap. You're talking 150 quid. In comparison, yeah. Which is the comparison you just I'm made. I'm just thinking that... I'm using your comparison. I'm just thinking... Uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking they could release a box that costs like 30 quid and boom, done, you can stream it. Mm. They could, but they, they, they wouldn't be making any money on that. I mean, they, yes, the argument is that they make money from the, you know, the, the stream. Really? Service, they they but... would. They, 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 they would. They'd still be making money from your subscription. That's, That's the point. That's what I've just said, Nick. Okay. But they're still not making the money well, up front. Well, I was front. speaking over you, so they're fair. They're still making the money up front. And that, that's, that's the worry for them, is that if, if they... The person doesn't stick with their streaming service, then they've essentially lost some money. Mm. Whereas with somebody like Steam, people are already invested in their service; they're just giving them more reasons to use it. Well, yeah, but I think I think it's something that could go somewhere. Something that could go somewhere. That's that's the rational game's official yes. word on it. It's something that could go somewhere. <laughs> Thanks for that amazing I insight, <laughs> Nick. I think I think it's worth keeping an eye on. I I, I do think that that is a. It could work. I, it's my only point. I mean, I, it? Yeah, I mean it's it by all means if they come out with a, a cheap top a, a cheap set top box, then I will eat my words. Um, it's there the sort go. of thing that I could see <laughs> them shoving into a TV. You know, and trying to upsell to the t the the television because it has this Nvidia Now thing. Um, I could totally see them doing that, and I think that'd probably be a good move. Um, but I'd be surprised if they come up with anything cheaper than the Shield for the time being. Mm. I think it just dropped the price of the Shield. Mm. Meh. We'll have to see then, won't we? As I say, I'll I'll eat. Eat my hat if they uh, if they do it, but I, I will willingly do so. <laughs> Eat your hat. Um, so, uh, uh, Nick, let's talk about cancer. <laughs> that that's kind of a jarring transition. Hey, that was an awesome segue. <laughs> it's not just about cancer; it's about the game of that Dragon Cancer. Or more specifically, um, stuff the devs have got to say about Let's Players. Yeah, I mean, I only skimmed the article, but from what I <clears> gather, <throat> they want Let's Players to get cancer. No, 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 no. Would you don't. Do, be would insensitive. You like to, would you like to, uh, to carry on? What they're saying is, um, Let's Plays hurt the game sales, or at least in their case, because they have not, as they quote, they have not yet seen a single dollar from sales. And that's because they reckon they went and paid off all their debt with their revenue um, before anything else, before taking any profits, which is fair enough. But then they say that the game... Is it's basically a story game that's very linear, and you can watch a let's play like as a film or something. And they're saying that's basically hurting the sales because people would prefer to watch let's players do it as opposed to actually going and buying it themselves. Now I'd assume this game, all the profits from it would go to you know a cancer research charity anyway, but apparently not. Mm -hmm. But my frank um, 
opinion is, no, I don't think anybody would have really known about it had Let's Players not played it, and that's the whole point about Let's Plays. People play it for more for the people who, like, you know, uh, they're, they're the personality of the person playing it, uh, and sometimes to get the idea of whether they want the game or not. I didn't know anything about this game until I saw Japsetkai play it. I mean, yeah, I'd seen it pop up on um, <laughs> Steam and everything, but I was like, oh, it's just another game that doesn't really look interesting. The same with Firewatch. I didn't know anything about Firewatch. I saw it pop up on Steam, and I was like, eh. And then I saw uh, Markiplier play it. Play, Markiplier play it, damn it. And now I really, really want it, because... I um, will be able to go and play it myself and have my own experience, and you know it looks really good. And you've got to, you've got to think that this game is not maybe something people would buy at full price. So eventually they'll buy it, but not straight away. I mean, it says they've sold uh, over fourteen thousand five hundred copies, which is not too bad for an indie game, like that's not been out too long but I think they're kind of blaming the wrong people in this I don't think there's any blame to really assign what is your opinion Marty you're completely silent I'm just rambling at this point I completely agree with you um, they made a game they, um, they, they I assume um, kind of marted it as best they could um, they got some people to buy the game um, and then they're complaining that not everybody bought the game. Not yeah. everybody's going to buy the game. Um, I mean, yes, some people let's play the game, and some people will have watched those let's play. Who's to say that any of those people would have actually purchased the game? Chances are, if they wanted yeah, to purchase people... the game and play it, they, they would have done so. Uh, those people probably wouldn't have bought the game anyway. Yeah, so those people wouldn't have even known about the game. I thought the point of this game, because the lead developer, Ryan Green... Uh, actually had a kid who died because of cancer, I assume. Um, and I thought the whole game was kind of like a message, a point to raise awareness about cancer. I think the, and now it seemed... I think the idea and I would have thought that it, kind be... of, it, it follows his journey of how he copes with the, the fact that his child has cancer and, and the, the, yeah. the terrible ordeal that he would have gone through with it. The point being, I didn't believe it was for profit, and I thought any profit would be, you know, for a cancer charity or something. <coughs> I didn't expect them to be like, oh, we haven't made any money from this. I thought it was, it was going to be, like, you know, say, an awareness game, a, a an experience to kind of draw attention to the, this, these problems and stuff. So I... I, I and I think it's good that people have, if it's for, like, raising awareness, I think it's good that Let's Players play it, that, because then all the subscribers, or most of them, of these really big Let's Players, like Mark Clyde and Jack Septicai, will watch it, and learn about the issues, learn about the story of this person, and maybe when they see, like, a, a collection for a cancer charity, they might go ahead and say, like, okay, I'll donate because I saw the struggle this person had to go through, which would be achieving the ultimate goal of raising awareness, giving money to the charity, and helping cancer research and everything. But as it is, it seems like they're complaining that the actual developers haven't got any money from it, which kind of seems a bit short-sighted, really, considering that content I mean, it of might, it. it. It might be short-sighted for, for yourself because you, you had this understanding, if you like, in your head, but it's not necessarily a, a terrible thing for them to, to want money for work that they've done. I think that's perfectly Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Um, but the, but no, they, I understand. Uh, like... oh, shit. But wow. the fact is that um, although the fact is that they're, they're stating that they've lost sales through Let's Plays. When in reality, they have absolutely zero empirical evidence for that. They're talking out of their mm. bottoms. Um, and whilst, yes, that's absolutely fine, people are allowed to talk out of their bottoms. It's, it's not, I believe, reasonable for so many large 
um, games news um, outlets to voice these opinions of these uh, these developers as though fact uh, and not argue with them in any way shape or form I think that's wrong and I think that that mm. journalism is doing a, a disservice to uh, to its fan base I, I think it's all a bit of a messy situation it kind of reminds me of a situation that happened with Fez and um or oh, what's his name who actually made Fez I can't remember Filthy. but he basically kicked up a stink about so yeah that's it Filthfish he basically kicked up a stink about this kind of thing and just seemed a little bit off uh, yeah I mean he, he was just he was he had a bit of a a bit of an old ditty on him Being a his bit bonnet. of a paddy <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, yeah he effectively kind of ended his career very publicly and I feel sorry for him in that sense because he shouldn't feel that he needed to do that, and um, and he undoubtedly um, tarnished what could have been a, a very promising career. Um, but he can't help it if he's a bit of a dick. People have to remember that maybe uh, let's players are making a bit of revenue off of their game. But at the same time, if you're an indie developer, the Let's Players are giving you exposure. Mm -hmm. Because, if it, especially if it's your first game. I mean, it's not like the whole thing I've been seeing about uh, like reaction channels, the whole thing blow up, about the people who just sit there completely silent while the video plays, and the video's taking up most of the thing. The Let's Players, most people are there, for the actual let's players to see how they play it to see their reactions and see their opinions and these let's players do talk they don't just sit there and play through them completely silently yeah i think well most that's, of them don't that, that's one thing about this um, that dragon cancer um, game is that as you said earlier it, it's very linear um and that this it's it's almost more like a an interactive film than anything else um, yeah, so it's, it's later, understandable that you, that you might well have watched it, you know, watched the gameplay once, and not really feel the need to play it again. Um, uh, I think yeah. that's that's kind of one thing that let's players maybe should take into account a little bit um, when, when they play these things. Perhaps not play the whole game or whatever else, but you know that that's again that's up to the let's play. That's not up to the to the developers to decide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's one mm. thing that Toby Fox did quite well with Undertale is obviously that was covered massively by Let's Players, um, but he <laughs> More than re reached out. He reached out to Let's Players and said to them, "Yeah, absolutely fine. Play through my game. Just please, at the start of it, ask that people play through it themselves as well, um, because there's so yeah. much more to see than you're going to show them." Um, and I thought that was really quite quite a nice way of doing it, that it, he personally reached out to a lot of big Let's Players uh, and kind of got them to put that message in at the start of their, their videos. Um, and it, it did make a difference. I think a lot of people did view the game slightly differently because they knew that there was more to it and, and they knew that you know, Toby had gone out of his way to do that. I think um, we're going to have to uh, think about this and make a point of... Uh not playing walking simulators in their entirety, not that I was going to anyway, and not kind of my cup of tea. But mm -hmm. uh, I know I play the, uh, like the I used to plays and the I, I have not played, and those are kind of, those are supposed to be kind of first impressions or retro impressions uh, to kind of give people an idea of what a normal person would uh, see from this game, to kind of just give them an idea of whether they would like it or whether they should go back and play the game. And the games I do play uh, through an entire their entirety, like uh, for instance, like the, I played Brutal Doom, uh, Fallout 4, uh, Quake 4. Those are kind of action games that you would play over again, um, and people might play differently. Uh, so they could go, but it, it's not just uh, going through and seeing everything and going, okay, yeah, I feel like I've played that now. Like I've uh, seen people play uh, Wolfenstein: New Order through. I, I've seen, I've watched an entire Let's Play of that all the way through. Uh, I think I saw Jesse Cox play it through. Um, doesn't mean I don't want to play it. I own the game. I bought it, and I fully intend on playing it myself. 
So yeah, I think it's just kind of a give and take. Uh, Let's players have to be careful about exactly what they show, whether they might be taking revenue away if they show the entire game and everything in a game. Um, but then the developers have to realise that maybe some of the larger Let's Players are maybe giving them some exposure. I, I don't know, it's a bit... Uh, the situation's a bit muddy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Are we moving on? Have I talked I too so. much? I think we should have done a while ago. So, last thing. Yeah. Um, Microsoft. Last thing. Fluff piece. Funny piece, so, lighten the mood a bit. Let's let's kind of just look at this from the from the beginning, if you like. So, Microsoft are working on artificial intelligence. That's no uh, no random yes. thing. Now, what they have done is they created a new uh, a new Twitter account uh, with it. What appeared to be, you know, what was created to be a teenage girl um, AI. Now, first of all. Why did they make her a teenage girl? I mean, that that's just begging for issues in and of itself. I know, to a, maybe to appeal to the majority of people on Twitter, you know, like teenagers. But you know that you're going to, to encourage uh, potential negative... Uh, maybe they didn't realise just, just how... Maybe they didn't realise how just how messed up the internet really was. <laughs> I mean, if if they didn't by this point, then they they really are behind the times. Yeah. Because let's face it. Oh, we'll give the internet the, internet the benefit of the doubt. Them. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, the internet is is a bad place. Um, yeah. So yeah, so they so they created this um, this ridiculous um, AI, which is fine. Um, so <laughs> the, what happened was what turns out is that um, by it, it, it learns um, as people tweet at it it takes into account what they say and it is able to kind of regurgitate elements of it um, in, in, in the next few tweets that it, it sends out now this is the internet so what was being sent to it <laughs> were probably quite uh, quite tasteless. Um, yeah, the so for example, here, nothing if one, not tasteless. One internet that it sent out was, um, can I just say that I'm stoked to meet you? Humans are super cool. Which, which you know, is pretty good. Then, just a few hours later, I fucking hate feminists and they should all die and burn in hell. Another one later, <coughs> Hitler was right. I hate the Jews. Now, I should specifically note that I... Um, I in no way endorse Tay tweets, um, and <laughs> the, uh, the the views stated are that of the artificial intelligence, not myself. Um, I, in fact, am a big fan of the Jews. Yay, Jews go Jews. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, what, what did you think of this? I think it's fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ted Cruz is the Cuban <laughs> Hitler. He blames others for all the problems. That's what I've heard so many people say. And it's it's just, pretty amazing. Oh, at least the internet is good at beta testing your damn AI. Hmm, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in the future, put a morality system in your AI. <laughs> Don't just have it retweet back everything that everybody says, you know. Mm-hmm. God. <sighs> because... They should take into account, if they do something like this, people will uh, tweet profanities at it, people will tweet all kinds of random shit at it, and people will also try to break it, above all else. Mm-hmm. <sighs> makes me think... <laughs> um, we're not so much in... <laughs> yeah, makes me think that we're not so much in danger from a Terminator-style apocalypse anymore as more of a uh, 4chan style apocalypse with AI mm-hmm. <sighs> from this is fucking ridiculous I mean there were no there were no, there were no good words for this this is nuts yeah and in 24 hours as well oh yeah it, it, it did not take long it did not take long <sighs> at all um, it's pretty still pretty impressive in terms of AI um it's impressive, uh, I'm, yeah. It's I'm, quite, I'm quite, quite impressed by the whole thing. Um, 
and I find it quite funny as well that they, they ended up leaving it at see you soon humans need sleep now so many conversations today thanks um, so they got to a point where they just had to end it I know really maybe it's more uh, more accurate of an internet dwelling real person than we give it credit for I can say, have you trolled some of these uh, forums when people are on there late at night? They leave all kinds of controversial, dodgy shit. And I think it's uh, a point that she is basically just saying back what everybody has tweeted at her. Um, so people have said these things in the first place. And she is just kind of amalgamating them and throwing them back. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and I, what I'm really looking forward to, um, to kind of round this off in some way, is them starting to try to implement this kind of artificial intelligence into games. Um, and seeing what they can create with an artificial intelligence in a game scenario. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking, imagine if Siri started responding to you like this. I'll never, it's, oh, it's more, people wouldn't buy if, iPhones anymore. Imagine if you had NPCs <laughs> that didn't just say the same two phrases. Yeah, that that would actually be really really cool. Mm. Imagine if I you think had they've got a, a, a partner, a, a somebody that you're, you know, you're wandering along with that you can have almost you know, a real conversation with. Yeah, I think they need to go along with it. I mean, there are uh, things on the internet like. Uh, Eevee bot and boy bot and stuff uh, that are kind of this type of thing. So the technology is coming along nicely, but I still think they've got a way to do to, in order for. Because if you went and said stuff like the people have been saying to this Twitter account to a normal person, they kind of look at you like, the fuck are you on about? They need to put something like that in, like a filter in to these AIs to actually make them realize when people are messing with it. Mm. And actually make a point of not learning these bits. Yeah, I mean, I don't I'm... know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Tay tweets is just uh, subject to a lot of peer pressure. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually looking through anyway. the, uh, the <laughs> tweets now. And to be fair, <clears throat> things like Hitler tweets are um, are quite few and far between. It's not like you know it got to a point where every message was was Hitler based. Um, the, I've just really? done a quick control F and, and I can't find any Twitter bait, uh, Hitler based tweets for a while just talk about humans <laughs> so you're lot, saying though. that kill all the humans <laughs> not quite uh, oh, ok then <laughs> <laughs> bow down to your robot overlords mm. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's still. It, I actually think it's it's genuinely pretty cool what they what they've made. No, the technology uh, for the future. I, I I could see it going some way, but you know, it's it's just funny seeing it develop and the stuff they come out with is pretty ridiculous. Yep. <sighs> On that note, I think we should bring the webcast to a close. Yeah, it's probably the end. Doors so... are closed, people. Go away. Go home. Nothing more. See you. Exactly. Um, so uh, this was us. You're terrible at outros. I finished. My name's been Nick. His name's been Marty. We are the Rational Gamers. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, all that lovely jazz. And I guess we will see you next time. Yeah, bye -bye. talk to you soon, guys. Have fun. Bye.